Thank you very much. Okay, next up we have Miss Hannah Camis, who I can see waiting for us. Uh, ESOL practitioner and TESOL trainer, adjunct language instructor at Alexandria University, TESOL affiliate network professional council member, TESOL material writers interest section co-chair, the Japan Association for Language Teaching Computer Assisted Language Learning Special Interest Group co-chair. Well and done after in the one I've, I Listen, I lived in Japan. They love long-winded names. All right. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, Miss Camis, uh, we'll just do the whole sherry thingy. And uh, have you pressed all, all the right course. buttons? I am in the process of pressing buttons. So that one is the important one, and I shall do that one too. So, Miss Camis, the floor is yours. Well, great, <laughs> Paul and Christy. Great to be back. Thank you for inviting Thank me. Thank you very much. And hi, Amira. <laughs> It's always a pleasure to be here with you guys. Amazing work, tech work, and hosting <laughs> moderation. I'm impressed. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, we, we are as well, actually, that we've managed to, okay? <laughs> Keep okay. going all day. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm starting the timer. Ladies and gentlemen, wonderful to be with you today. Let me share with you uh, my topic, mobile-based hole in the wall, a school in the cloud come true. A bit intriguing, right? Let's see where this is coming from. Now, that comes from um, a hole in the wall experiment that was back in the 1999 by a very inspiring uh, leading professor called Sugata Mitra, I uh, wonder if you've heard of him before. That uh, professor started uh, something groundbreaking at that time. He simply uh, installed a computer, a desktop, a screen, and a keyboard in a hole in a wall in India, uh, you know, on the street, okay, for street kids running around just to play, all right? Those kids had no literacy skills whatsoever, okay? Not Indian, not English for sure, and no computer skills. But they were just curious to know what this is all about and how to start it. That computer was connected to the internet. So they sat together, they just fiddled with a tool, the keyboard and the screen till they managed to start it. And believe it or not, they started, they accessed the internet, they started to play games together and their learning improved. Their literacy skills have gone up. How is that possible? I call it incidental learning. It happens. Yeah, some people were talking about that earlier. How so? I mean, learning, they're into the game. So what? Okay, that is what gamification is all about. It's all about the motivation. Okay, we would like to win regardless. Learning happens in the background. Anyways, that concept, okay, started other similar ones, granny clouds. So imagine us teachers becoming grannies and starting our learning environments in the cloud, but just responders to the learner's needs, not starting a class, a full-fledged class with materials and stuff, but addressing the learner's needs. That is basically what self-organized learning environments are all about. They call them souls. Now, where does the whole idea of mole come from? It's a similar one. And why on earth have I been intrigued by that mole thing. Well, that goes back to COVID-19 period, the lockdown. You remember, we were all locked down in our houses. Some of us had to work. We went through unprecedented emergency pedagogies we had to follow. We had no idea how to connect with learners, Zoom, was not the best of things because of the dark screen, still, we had to find ways to connect. 
However, there were discrepancies. Some of my learners had no PC, had no laptop at home, right? So that is against digital equity. Okay, we don't have equal resources. And there is that idea that's come, okay, in the forefront. Now, can we possibly have a whole computer into a mobile pocket size device that happened okay right after smartphone phones got into uh, the formula so these were like assumptions i had and maybe in the heads of so many other teachers so i wanted to explore that digital divide the haves versus the have-nots and how this affects learning so I had this big question in mind. Can mobile assisted learning environments or mobile organized learning environments be more conducive to learning now? And now I meant that time of the total lockdown than before COVID 19's times. To explore that big question, I thought of a survey. I created a survey around remote learning, inviting fellow teachers, and I was lucky to receive uh, responses from 118 responses, 45% of which come from Egypt and 46 from other countries. Now, their schooling system, where uh, they work, well, 80% public national uh, context schools and universities 20 percent only were in private contexts where they have resources now the survey explored three main areas the first part was about student perceptions on mobiles for collaboration and self-learning the second part was about mobiles and gaps in the educational system the third was about students, whether or not reverting to pre-COVID-19 educational practices. The first part was around this question. Do learners positively perceive their use of mobiles to collaborate and self-learn? I'm going to ask you a question here. And please, I'm inviting you to scan this code if you are watching okay uh, on the screen and you have your cell phone next to you you can scan if not please open this uh, url this um, address ahaslides.com slash uh -huh, tbfqa i'm waiting now for your responses here to compare them to the responses of those teachers back in time so let's see here i only had one response maybe can i have some more we have 150 people around here so can i have some more please give me some support i only had like maybe no hearts i want i want responses nobody said no okay let's see okay now here we go well 94 percent said yes still here we had six percent who actually did not use uh, mobile phones no resources whatsoever now this is my second question to you did you like using mobile phones for learning purposes learning slash teaching think back when it was total lockdown Really? Oh, yeah. Okay, I like that. Some no's now popping up. No worries. Yeah. Okay, I'd like to see more, some more responses, please. Yeah, not everyone liked it, especially back in time. 2021 was not the best of context. Yeah, well, let's see. Now comparing it here. Yeah, look at that here. Well, two thirds liked it. Mm hmm. However, one third did not. Okay. 
The second part of the survey was about this question. Have moles helped fill in the gaps in the educational system? Again, back in time, 2021. Let me ask you the first question. Did you use mobile phones to organize yourself and create a learning environment with your fellow colleagues? And here is focus on continuous professional development. So it's you and your coworkers, fellow colleagues online, virtually. We had no access to each other except through computers or cell phones. Yeah, I like that. Okay, 50-50% like that. I sincerely like it. All right, when we have a complete divide. All right, now look at the learners here. Uh, sorry, the respondents here. Look at that. Well, as a matter of fact, 89% uh -huh, said yes, they did. 11% did not. Interesting. Now, the second question here, did you use mobile phones for learning independently without external help? Keep in mind, independently and learning, we were in the dark. So many tools, so many websites, so many techniques. So we, de we did need to self-learn, train ourselves how to use these. So apparently here we have 100%. Okay, let's see that. Now, here we had like, aha, uh -huh, 80% saying yes, but 20% did not really touch mobile phones. So the third question to you, did mobile phones help you and your colleagues fill in the gaps in the system in your educational institution? Well, we, with varying degrees, we had gaps at that time, especially. Uh -huh. Keep in mind that time, back in 2021. Regardless whether or not we had our resources, some institutions, private institutions, had resources, but still, we were challenged how uh, possible it was to use that remotely. Now, 60% did, okay, uh, uh, actually uh, benefit from uh, mobile phones. 40% didn't. Let's compare. Now, apparently, huh, 69%, all right, filled in the gap versus 31% who couldn't, like one third again. That takes us to the third and last part of the survey. Would learners revert to their exact pre-COVID-19 educational practices. I asked the respondents to make a prediction. Okay, post-COVID, would their learners go back to their uh -huh, old habits in learning? Yes or no? My first question to you. If you were to choose, would you go back to the exact pre-COVID-19 ways of education? You can think of now, your present time. Well, yeah, okay, I like here, I like the honesty and I like the 40, 60% here. Uh-huh, 60% still would go back to the exact pre-COVID ways of education. It's safer. Uh, more familiar to us. We fear the unknown, still do. Well, 40% uh -huh, say, okay, they would like to go back to the exact, and 60% say, well, no. Life has changed post-COVID. It can never be the same again. You cannot step into the same river twice. Let's look here at another, or actually compare that to um, the respondents. If you were to choose, would you go back? Well, here, 67% said yes. They prefer their old ways, okay. 33% uh, did not, okay. Second question to you. 
Are there tasks or functionalities where learners believe mobiles outperform desktops and laptops? And here is a nice comparison between mobile-based apps versus, it could be sometimes desktop or web-based kind of applications or tools. You can still, up till now, we have uh, this and that, web-based tools that have mobile-based versions. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes it's exclusively mobile-based or exclusively web-based. So the question is, are there tasks and functionalities where learners believe mobile phones outperform? Now, here, I like here the fact that you say, well, 80%. Well, dependence on cell phones now is more than ever. Learners, in particular, huh, are hardly separated from their cell phones. You can hardly manage to do that. And especially if you don't ban it inside the classroom, they cannot be separated. Well, so some say no. Okay, well, interesting that your learners, okay, um, would believe otherwise, but fine. I mean, it's okay. Now, apparently here, those who said yes, 60%, almost 59% here said yes, there are functionalities where mobiles outperform, especially the speed. Look at speed. Now I can use my cell phone to do certain things that took me longer on a desktop and laptop. That's personally speaking. So imagine our learners. It's a lot faster to do things now on cell phones. 40%, huh? well, their perception of functionalities uh -huh, was no, which is fine. We may not be fully aware okay, of the functionalities. Mobile phones are quite new, brand new, especially to us, but we need to check with learners. So now let's move on to the big question that still remains. Now, my question here, you think that school in the cloud uh -huh, has come true. What do you personally think? And I'm inviting you uh -huh, to give me some answers if you wish. Okay. So on the slide, yeah, you think so? We have a potential school in the cloud dream come true? 100% say yes, 50%, I like that. Okay, I like that fluctuation thing in the graph. So yeah, 80% now say yes, it's a dream come true. Um, well, I do respect the 17%. We're going to see about that. Now, this is time for you to ask any questions or share your comments if you wish. Feel free to ask them here so I can keep a record of those. You can, we're going to see them all together if you wish. Okay, so you feel free to jot them in if you're using a cell phone or otherwise, or of course you can put them in the Q&A or the chat and uh, Paul and Christy would be um, kind enough to share them with, with all of us. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. And time to receive questions. I thought we haven't quite got any in the chat box yet at the moment, but another, okay, right? Well done. It was very, very interesting. Okay, and basically, if we're, we are all the same. Okay, I mean, we all sit here on, you know, sit there on our phones. Okay, right. Um, I do remember during COVID, did I use my phone? A little. Okay, to be honest, I use my laptop more. 
I think. Okay, it's a blur. I think for a lot of us teachers, the sudden change from classroom to online was a bit of a blur. Okay, it was sort of like a bit of a manic, okay, change from one to the other. Okay, what do you think, Paul? Do you agree with that? I honestly, most of COVID was a blur for me um, because it was a literal uprooting of everything that we practiced and a complete reorganization of how we do everything to so take the, the, the physical classroom and take it online. Um, of course, before then, everything in the classroom, all the technology we had was purely used on an ad hoc basis to support the teacher. Whereas online technology was it. Um, so yeah, it's, I think one thing that's come out through uh, throughout this conference is that the technology is here to stay. Uh, that that particular Pandora's box cannot be shut. Yeah. Um, and no matter what we have, it be it phones, laptops, whatever, it's there and they're, they're not going away anymore. So we just have to kind of get used to this new. Um, okay. I new have a, a comment in hmm. the chat box saying I did not really have time to type my question in that. Okay. Um, uh, and that tool okay i shared oh, cool. the slides yeah if there is a chance yeah we can again show the link so we can have more questions i'm unable to share anyways hang on, hang on. Uh, we can just resort back again bear with me a moment uh, yeah i'm going to see about that and feel free to put that in the Q&A box here if you can't. Hang on. There we go. Right. Okay. Do you want to try sharing again, please? Yeah, I'm able to. Okay. Let yes. Me... Okay. So. It would be also a good idea if the person chats, writes the, uh, writes the comment on the chat box. That yeah, possible. sure. Sure. I'll be happy to receive that either way. Yes. So, um, let me ask you, Paul hmm. and Christy. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, oh, oh, no, thinking. Oh, oh, oh. Heart, heart palpitations. No, um, no, no worries. Okay, it's a very simple question. Okay. okay. Uh, what mobile apps have worked for you to engage your learners, if, if any? Um, okay. Now, off the top of my head, I can't remember if it's quizzes or Quizlet. Okay, right. Um, there's one that Paul and I have used when we've been doing things with mm. other courses. Which one did we use, Paul? Was it quizzes? Quiz the most learn? recent one is quizzes. Quizzes. And literally, we give them a link like you've done, a QR code and a, and a link. And we go through the quiz. You know, they can submit their answers as we're doing as we're doing class. Okay, we found that one. Okay, that's yeah. been working well. Kahoot. Okay, that's it's another. all classic. It's classic. Okay, yeah. Amira's doing a thumbs up because Amira's sort of like, uh huh. Okay. <laughs> um, other apps on my phone, not so much. I mean, there's a lot of web based resources. Okay. Mm. We, we use it, a lot. Allow me, in my work, I use apps that are very much related to the administration of education. So, of course, Google Drive. Uh, Google Classroom, uh, everything related to the, the whole host, like Jamboard, all these lovely uh, things that are used and you can use it from, from all your Google education hosts. That was very beneficial for me. Oh, okay. Mm. Other people are saying Nearpod. Okay, yeah. Nearpod. Padlet as well. But Padlet yeah. is not an app. Padlet is a site. But yeah. it's yeah. really, really very beneficial. Yeah, it helps you. For example, if I'm doing a presentation as such, I can create like, you know, uh, columns here for questions, comments, something related to X uh, topic or subtopic, Y subtopic and so on. So I can classi classify. Learners can in real time, they, if I'm sharing a screen, can uh, look at each other's comments. Have you by any means used a Google Doc for collaborative writing. We use them all the time. All of the time, yeah. Nice. Yeah. 
I think Google, you, uh, yeah, go ahead. Doc yeah. And of course, Google Sheet, that's in the administration. It's it's invaluable for me, the Google Sheet yeah. of all, with all the reports and the percentages coming, looking wonderful. So I'm really- Actually, excited. our next, okay. our next Anything host- Anything that is Google we are using here. Actually, our, <laughs> next, our next presenter actually is apparently a big fan of, of Microsoft Teams. Huh? Um, <laughs> Although I'm not, um, although I'm not, too, but I'm getting, I'm getting, okay, I'm getting more familiar. It's yeah. not as user friendly. How uh, about Meet as well when it comes to pronunciation? Yeah. How about pronunciation? Have you used any pronunciation tools? Um, really actually, cool. when I was, when I was actually working as a teacher out in Japan, um, Google translates actually work quite well because what i would task my students to do is to speak a sentence in english to google translate and if it translated it into japanese correctly mm -hmm. then obviously their pronunciation was good enough that it was picked up by the device and translated appropriately um so i think we, we you know, there are all sorts of things that we can do where we can repurpose things um if we need i to. would uh, i would suggest elsa speak Elsa. Elsa, Elsa, Elsa speak. speak. It's an amazing tool that provides feedback mm. on how well. Hold on, if you hold allow on. me, I, I have hang on. Pens are out. Aside. Pens are out. Pens Elsa. are out. <laughs> yeah. Elsa, yeah. It, there is actually, another side, Hannah. That yes, is sure. Youglish. You heard of that? You spell it. it. You, you. It's like YouTube, uh -huh. but it is like you English. You English. Oh, yeah. So it's called you English. And the good thing about it is like, if you're not sure of a certain word, the pronunciation of that particular word, you write it on you English and it brings you different YouTube videos that has this word <clears throat> and it shows the different pronunciation. You, show, you see also the different accents, like British accent, American accent, Australian one and everything. So it's, it's really, really nice. Let me, let me try to dig it up and, and, and just like. Share okay. Now, yeah. other other uh, you know uh, resources that you may want to explore. Something. Uh, it's a website called ISL Collective. I live on uh, that. Ah, yes. Yeah. We live on that. Yeah. We both we live, live there. We yeah. li both live there. It's I claim brilliant. squatters' rights. <laughs> okay, brilliant. Love. That, that's the word. That's the English. And English Central for videos again. The point yeah. is, these are structured. Mm -hmm. Not as structured as ISL and Collective. No. And, um, you know, um, Central, yes, um, has again the feature of, again, speaking and giving feedback. So mm. it's comprehension based, where you have videos, like, you know, famous speakers giving speeches. You uh, have questions, you respond, and you may want to check your pronunciation as well. Yeah. So these are my two pens among others. If you're looking for um, a simple uh, learning management system, again, in the Google suite, I like using Google Classroom a lot. It's mm. become really user friendly. It connects with all types of Google, uh, you know, apps. Interestingly, uh, you can add your links in an organized fashion. It teaches, it, it's taught me how to be more organized, putting a course outline with weeks and so on and so forth. Yes, that's I, it for today. One, one, that, yeah. one that Kirsty and I uh, recommend on a regular basis based on uh, our experiences as teacher trainers is Google Scholar for people doing research. Um, because if you sign in and create your own Google account, you can obviously research papers. It's basically Google, but for academic papers. Um, I mean, when I was doing my research, my master's, I lived on there. Uh, I, I just lived on there. I, I just spent all my time down just copying papers. And uh, the great thing is, is that you can save them to your own personal library um, so that you can keep them, go back to them and refer to them on a regular basis. So if anybody's listening and doing any of our teacher trainer programs, then um, Google Scholar before you ask me about textbooks. Uh, because. <laughs> <laughs> you ask me what textbook is good uh what is the best site to go to finish my tesol assignments google scholar um <laughs> nice to go go there go to google scholar um because <laughs> it's really really good for me honestly brilliant place it is google but it just specifically looks at uh, textbooks and papers and uh, which can be downloaded as pdfs or you can read it as a website and save it for later 
absolutely fantastic. And best of all, you've got a little site button so we can have everything referenced properly because that's a, another thing that winds up uh, Kirsty and I when people don't reference things. I can, what are you talking I, about? I can <laughs> see the nervous twitches. Um, <laughs> but it's true. Uh, we like people to have everything referenced properly um, and Google Scholar is brilliant. So, yes. Right. Okay. Um, no more questions. Nope. No more questions. Thank you, Hannah. I just wanted to say, Hannah is a friend of mine, of course, and we are, <laughs> we, we go back to the university. So it's like, very, we've been colleagues for very, and friends. But for you're very younger. Long. You're I younger, say, aren't you? Even longer, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for all your Have help. to get that one in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Behind, behind the scene, Hannah has been helping me uh, in organizing this conference and in helping me with the speakers. So I, I just wanted to say thank you. You're awesome. Thank you. But you, you've <laughs> actually come a long way. I'm impressed with the, you know, the kind of setup you, you've had this year. Congratulations and a lot more to come. Yes. And looking forward to having you uh, face to face in person, Christy and Paul, if you wish. Very absolutely. soon, absolutely. That would be wonderful. Yes, yeah. we, we don't mind volunteering our services, do we, Paul? Okay, no, we're no, no, no. We're actually we are we are very affordable. Yes. Um, okay. <laughs> we are we're, we're not expensive. Um, no. okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just throw some pastries. We're fine. Yes. Uh, okay. Honestly, for goods. a donut. But yes, baked goods. We're, we're anybody's for a donut. Um, <laughs> <laughs> honestly, coffee and a donut. We're, we're there. Right. Okay. Thank we you have very one. much. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you very much. For thank you very much. Today. Okay, thank yeah, seriously, so it's indeed. been very, very interesting. Okay, Paul and I, we've got reading lists. Oh, yes. Subtitles. Absolutely. Apps, okay, to download new <laughs> websites to check out. I think okay. I might just have to take next week off. I, I, I'm agreeing with you. Okay, I've just been on holiday, but you know, whatever. Okay, we'll have next week off as well. Okay, you've got a lot to get through. Right. Okay, but thank you so much indeed again. Very, very interesting.